Well, greetings, my cubit of YouTube followers. Um, <laughs> this is the going to be the second to last Barney Oliver update. Um, I have finally uh, repaired what is wrong with the Davin pot and need to put it together. But before I put it together, oh, what a nightmare this control was. And when I first started this video, I was in love with with this control. Now I, I, I hate it a little bit. Um, it, it's still going to work out okay. But um, so let's go into opening this thing. Um, opening it is a royal pain in the ass. Um, the, the, you have to drive out a pin twice, actually. You have to drive out two pins. Um, and you can see right there on the main shaft that runs all the way through both decks where the pin goes through that holds on the outer deck. Um, and then uh, somewhere in here is the shaft part for the inner deck, which couples to this, or actually couples couples to this. Oh, have, have I gotten this wrong? Yes, I have gotten this wrong. Okay, this extension piece here is the one that goes to the outer deck. And this is the one that troubled me first. And then that this slides into here and this pin here is the one that holds on uh, the uh, the wipers for the inner deck both of these have to be driven out to get this open um, it took me a very long time to get this open because i was afraid of breaking it and um, one of the things to note if you ever have to go inside one of these things is if you drive out the pin yeah, let's see if I can get a focus on this tiny little pin. Okay, you see, if I can get it in the light just right, you can see how one end of the pin is perfectly round, and then it's been... Oh, let's see if I can get this in the light. It's pretty small, as you can see. It's fluted, is what I'm trying to get at. Um, the pin has one round end, and one fluted end. Come on with the focus. Okay, there. You can see the fluting, okay? That fluting, which goes all the way through to that end, does not go all the way through to the other end. When you drive this pin out, you want to drive it out from the non-fluted end. In other words, you want to put your punch tool on the non-fluted end and drive it out towards the fluted end important to know. Uh, you can drive it out the other way, as I discovered, but uh, yeah, it's a little harder that way because it's fluted, and I didn't realize that until I got the thing out. So, there you go. Um, so, how do you get it open, right? After you drive out, so this is the outer deck right here. This is what we saw in, like, what, the first or second video. And uh, after you drive that pin out, I, you can see I had a couple misses there, but luckily it didn't damage it. Um, after you drive the pin out, you are presented with, uh, let's take a look and see if I can put it partially back together. So you will be presented with this, basically, once you uh, get that pin out of there. Uh, let's see here. I'm trying to remember exactly how this was put together. Uh, actually, it would be this side. Okay, so when you get the pin out, let me put this back together a little bit. Uh, and uh, what do I feel like there's a piece missing? Huh? What do I feel like there's a piece missing? It goes that one, it goes this one, then then this one. Okay, so these two get stacked, and there's one of these in each one. And in between the layers here, you're presented with this, and there is one of these little guys right here. Okay, I, I misunderstood these. These just unscrew. So they, they go through the housing body, and they screw in like that. Okay? And... The first one that I encountered was so tight. I mean, it was so tight that I broke a tool trying to get it open. 
Um, you might need to make a specialized tool to line up with that, like take a piece of pipe that is the same diameter as this thing and then grind away two sides so that you're left with two little notches that you can use as a tool. Um, tools I use broke and I became convinced um, there's a couple like in this one here you see there's a a couple little folded tabs that are folded over right I became convinced that those were one-way tickets that once those were folded over you weren't going to get this thing to spin without drilling it out and so after breaking my tool and being com coming convinced that that was the case I actually wound up drilling them out on one side here uh, and then once I got it open, I realized the, the, my mistake that I didn't need to drill out those little tabs. Those are just locators to keep this shaft from spinning. So yeah, don't drill it out, but do make a tool that properly matches those notches so that you can get this thing unscrewed properly. The one on mine was just ridiculously tight. And then of course, once I got down to the second deck, that one was like finger loose. So go figure. Um... Yeah, so that is it. You got to drive out the pins and then you got to get unscrew one of those little guys or two of those. So two pins and two of those and then the whole shebang comes apart. Um so uh, why am I disillusioned with these? Well, let's start off with the first thing. Okay? Here is the wiper deck for the outer deck, right? There's there are the contacts, the spring-loaded contacts, and those ride against that surface, right? Uh, actually, I take it back. They ride against this one. Now, isn't that odd? Don't you notice something about these two decks? They're a little different, aren't they? Um, yeah, they're a lot different. They have different number of poles. Um, I mean, one of them just the, the extra pole isn't used. Um, but the center ring is totally in a different place, and it's larger on one, and they're completely different. So, What's the deal with that? This is the outer deck. This is the inner deck wiper. Two completely different designs. I mean, they could not be more dissimilar uh, in terms of the wiper. I mean, look at that versus that. I mean, this you know, a round plastic hard deck versus a piece of like, phenolic, <laughs> you know, even, even the, the center, you know, even the center, uh, shaft, uh, grommet, whatever the hell you call that. And even that's different. Totally, totally weird that they would put together a stereo pot with two different elements in it. And the differences didn't end there. Um, the reason I wound up opening this thing is because there was, I don't know, a third to a half a dB difference per consistently between the left and the right channel on this amplifier. And I went through every single transistor and gain stage in that thing trying to find it, and it wasn't in the amp. And, and ultimately, I just bypassed the pot and ran the amp you know, without it. And lo and behold, the, the two channels were matched perfectly in gain uh, and in everything else. So taking some measurements on the pot, I discovered that, well, you know, the, the left and right channel pot, the, there's resistance differences between these two. So I figure, okay, you know, it's 50 years old, some of the, or 40 something years old, some of the resistors have drifted, you know, so I'll, I'll open it up and I'll figure out what resistors have drifted and I'll replace them. Well, it, let me tell you, it, it's even worse than that. It, it's not that, that the resistors drifted and it's not that they didn't do a particularly good job matching them. It's they didn't do a job matching them at all. Um, and I'll show you in a second. Um, you see all these blue resistors are ones that I've just replaced all the other ones are original but just just the blue metal films are, are ones that i have replaced and i've replaced the same ones on both decks and the reason i replaced them is let's take a look at you know, we'll get to what the, they actually measured in a second but let's look at the first look at the values printed on the resistor on the inner deck 
The first resistor was 2,015 ohms. On the panel deck, it was 2,061 ohms. A 46 ohm difference. Uh, the next resistor, a 60 ohm difference. And on down the line, um, there's several resistors that were, you know, or is that a, hmm, something's going on there where it's a, oh yeah, that's a fraction of an ohm difference. But, um, so most of them, good matches to one another, but a handful of them just completely not good matches to one another, right? So let's take a look at the values that I actually measured with my, with my ohm meter, um, as you can see, those resistors are very, very close to the values that are printed on them, and those values don't match. Um, the, the percent difference, uh, you know, you can, as I scroll down here, you can see the percent difference from one channel to the other. Where did my mouse go? Uh, there it is. Okay, sorry. So you can, you can see the percent difference one channel to the other at each stage. And then over here, we're gonna we're, I, I set up the spreadsheet to um, sum those. It's a running difference. So at each stage, what is the cumulative difference between them? And you can see that in some spots, the cumulative difference is quite large, especially here in the beginning. You know, a couple or almost three percent in one spot, and that is we're looking here. These are the these are the differences in the values presented to ground, and these are the differences in the values presented to the amp, um, and the cumulative percent errors. All right, so, but if we get, you know, about midway through here, we see that there is this 0.75% that is different to the ground value, pretty much present all the way through this, and this is that third to half a dB difference that I was seeing on all volume levels. Um, this pot was never matched from the factory. I mean, not even close to being matched, which is crazy. So over here is a column of the new resistor values that are in there now. And the ones that are highlighted in orange are the seven resistors that I replaced on both decks. Okay. So let's Let's do a little thing here where I copy all of these, or just the ones, you know, at least up to the ones where I've changed it. And we're, we're going to go over here and paste this into the part of the into the part of the spreadsheet that does the formulas, and take a look at the percent differences now going down. You know, uh, it's real high up top here, almost three percent, and then it you know gets down and stays at around three quarter of a percent. Here it's, you know, between half a percent or, you know, third of a percent, half a percent up top. And then, you know, fairly small differences as we go down on the value to the amp, but the value to the ground really matters. So I'm going to paste those values in over the original values. And we'll just paste those in. And um, I'm going to focus on this and watch what happens to the percent differences when I paste in the, the new resistor values. Look at that, tenth of a percent difference now, or less, on the value to ground. So you know, around a tenth or a less. The highest it gets is what, 0.12 percent, and then over here on the percent difference to the signal to the amp, you know, around the same. So much, much tighter matching now, and I think that this is going to eliminate uh, that noticeable gain difference. I mean, you know, one can argue if a third to half a dB is, is audible, but in an amplifier that was so specifically designed to not have a balance control where the, the designer stated the use of the stepped attenuator as a reason for a balance control to be skipped and that the, the two channels should be perfectly matched always, you know, this this poor thing here that they gave him he kind of flies in the face of that. So um, I did a pretty good job. This is fiddly, fiddly work. You got to get a, a vice and, and some strong tweezers and a good uh, desoldering tool to get the old resistor out of there, bend up the new one and get it installed. Um, 
from the factory, these resistors do not stand up straight. They're kind of pushed in a little, and that's because you won't get the outer case on if you try to line them all up pretty and make them stand next to each other. They're just a little too fat to do that. But anyway, that is the story of the HP Barney Oliver Davin potentiometer. You know, I was in love with this pot before I took... Oh, you know, there's another design flaw in this thing that I want to cover. Um, the wipers, uh, particularly the inner one, the, the bigger contact in the middle, and this style wiper. Um when this wiper goes over these contacts, as it passes over the edge, the round edge, it tends to shave off, because these are perfectly flat, and what happens is, is it, that wiper comes over the edge and it shaves off these very thin little whisker semicircles of metal off of the edges of these contacts and these accumulate inside the pot and I found several of them these things are packed they're not packed with grease but the uh, the contacts are lubed with you know, like petroleum jelly or something like that right um, and there was just these little metal whiskers everywhere and they were easily large enough to bridge you know to bridge two adjacent contacts or even to bridge this contact to that um, and that it, that owes to you know how aggressive, and you know and sharp, these really are sharp too. Um, so I'm going to clean these up and maybe try to burnish them a little bit so they're a little less sharp and and you know and relube them um, before I put this thing back together. Um, but you know after having worked on one of these, I just want to say like uh, the insane money that I see people paying for these online. These old Davin pots, it makes me wonder. You know, there have to be, you know, it, maybe there's a reason this company isn't around anymore. Uh, you can sell people stereo pots that are built completely dissimilarly one channel to the other and, you know, give you <laughs> half a dB difference between channels on two, two dB steps. That's not great. Um, anyway... So I'm going to put this thing back together. I'm going to have to replace one of those pins that I drove out because one of them broke during removal. Um, I'm going to get this thing all cleaned and lubed and put back together now that all the resistors are replaced and, and matched up well. And I'm, and I'm confident that's going to solve the gain difference. But man, what an adventure with this pot. I'll tell you, <laughs> not recommended. Uh, <laughs> it's a lot of work. I think, you know, knowing what I know now, I could open one of these and do this kind of repair in a few hours. But yeah, it took me probably six to eight hours of work putting together this spreadsheet, going online, ordering, you know, ordering resistors to replace the ones that, I, you know, man. Um, anyway, uh, I guess that's it for this video. The, the next and final Barney Oliver video will be coming up soon once I get it all put back together because it's it's done now and we'll do all of the bench measurements and frequency response, distortion, all that stuff, power output, and uh, put all the put it all back together and, and call it done. Good night.